Okay, well, today I'm going to present on our Metasurface Electro technology for stable and efficient OLED displays. Our team consists of uh, four people at the moment. Myself, I'm an associate professor at Rutgers University, 22 years uh, doing research in photonic materials and thin film optical electronics. Uh, Sneha Shrikumar, she's a graduate student in my lab and she's an expert in making OLED devices. And uh, then Heidi Pacheco, she uh, focuses on making plasmonic structures, nanostructuring, and she's experienced working in industry and digital manufacturing. And we have an industry met mentor and consultant who uh, worked with us during our iCore ex experience. Um, he's a 30, Garo Canary, and he's 35 years experience in uh, commercializing optical and, uh, and electronic devices and formerly worked at a, a range of companies. Our team is pretty tech heavy at the moment, I would say. Uh, we have some industry expertise and there's uh, would be a gap, I think, in terms of uh, looking for someone that could lead or lead a company or, uh, based on our technology uh, technology, and who could focus on partnering, manufacturing partnerships and fundraising. Um, the goal in the next few years is to form a company based on our technology, technology initially from non-dilutive funding and with the main aim initially of establishing manufacturing and joint de development partners. So the problem is at the moment is that well, we're focused on OLED technology. So as an organic light emitting diodes, they're displacing liquid crystal technology as the dominant uh, display technology at the moment. So think your cell phone displays, laptop, TVs, and so on. They've also been into looking uh, at emerging in technologies for um, tail lights and cars, as well as general lighting. The big problem with OLEDs is the blue pixel. And the blue pixel is um, about uh, far less stable, greater than 20 times less stable, and about 50% less efficient compared to red and green. All commercial OLED devices use fluorescent blue, and, which is lower efficiency compared to phosphorescent red and green. Um, the reason being fluorescence is more, blue is more stable than phosphorescent. So our solution is to use what we call metasurfaces, plasmonic metasurfaces integrated into the electrode of the OLED. Um, the metasurface has strong local electromagnetic fields that can accelerate the rate of phosphorescence from blue materials. And this mitigates some of the issues with stability like triplet, triplet annihilation events. And we can also improve efficiency by enhancing light extraction using these metasurfaces. So our value proposition is that our approach uh, can help display manufacturers to increase the stability of blue OLED pixels by a factor of 3.5 and improve efficiency by up to 33%. To date, we've done a lot of the proof of concept research, and we're starting to make some prototype devices in our lab. Um, we have two uh, US patents based on the technology and more than 15 peer reviewed papers on integrating metasurfaces with thin film optical electronic devices. In our proof of concept research, we focus mainly on different ways to make the metasurfaces, nano imprint lithography, thermally assisted de-wetting, nanosphere lithography, and also in demonstrating the improved stability and efficiency. As an example here, you can see compared to a planar a silver electrode by integrating these metasurfaces onto the electrode, we can improve the, improve the stability by up to a factor of 3.6. And it becomes more pronounced at higher um, uh, excitation powers, which is very important for, for example, for micro displays where they need extremely high brightness. We've also started making some preliminary prototype devices integrating metal nanostructures and shown significant increases in luminance or brightness um, by integrating the plasmonic structures. Key areas of next development that we see are that we want to demonstrate the metasurface in emerging top emitting OLED device architectures. This is the architecture that all comp display companies are moving to in the next few years, if they haven't moved there already. And also in focusing on how to make our approach manufacturable and compatible with existing manufacturing processes. This we think will require development of a planarization layer, as well as making a very rapid method for making the metasurface, probably laser assisted thermal de-wetting. Um, just to give you a little bit more background on the, the, the space, the technology space, there are a number of companies that have um, raised significant capital, capital from a university IP um, that are in the display space. So some uh, highlighted examples here. Um, with regards to competing technology, we think the closest competitor, uh, competing technology is that developed by Universal Display Core. They have integrated plasmonic structures on the top of the OLED and top of the cathode here on the top emitting OLED. And they've used the plasmonic effects to demonstrate a threefold improvement in the stability at green wavelengths. 
as well as improving light extraction. In our case, we're focusing on the anode of the back electrode and we're integrating our metasurfaces. And I want to show you the, the competitive advantage that we have. If you're using discrete particles, for example, like the ones used in universal display or the ones we made in our lab here, they tend to be very affected by the dielectric environment. And so they usually scatter a green and red wavelengths. If you use a meta surface instead of discrete particles, you can actually access these shorter blue wavelengths. And we think that's the key advantage of our technology. Another interesting opportunity that we have using our technology is that we can integrate it at the interface of two manufacturing processes. So when you make an OLED, especially one that's active matrix, you build it on a thin film transistor and that is made in a separate manufacturing facility compared to the OLED itself. So they take the trans thin film transistor, move it to the manufacturing line and then make the deposit the anode and make the uh, OLED. So we think there's a natural break in the manufacturing process here that we can use to integrate our technology uh, without a, a significant disruption to the manufacturing process. In addition, there's some opportunity, recent opportunities, if you take a look at uh, Samsung's new quantum dot OLED TVs, they're based on multi-stack blue fluorescent OLED. So they use basically three fluorescent blue devices on top of each other to improve brightness so that they can drive red and green quantum dots to make red and green uh, pixels, as well as to uh, drive out the blue display, the blue pixel. Our technology, if we can uh, make it to work with this anode here at the back, we basically can eliminate the multi-stack and just use a single stack that would uh, be composed of a phosphorescent blue emitter and that would significantly lower the cost. With regards to our plan for the technology, um, at the moment we're focusing on demonstrating uh, phosphorescent blue bottom emitting devices and establishing the specific metrics so that we can benchmark um, the performance against commercial devices. And then we've raised um, funding from Tech Advance at Rutgers as well as the um, NSF Part Partnership for Innovation Program to study how we can integrate these meta surfaces into the pixel electrode and also to assess the manufacturability uh, alongside manufacturing partners. Um, moving beyond that, we think there'll be a decision making point in the next year or two where we will decide either to uh, license our technology or spin out our own company um, where we'd be looking at raising uh, SBI or funds, for example, to do pixel integration uh, to demonstrate that our process can work, work the full active matrix OLED uh, fabrication process. So in summary, we're uh, addressing what we think is an important problem for OLED displays, the blue pixel stability and efficiency. We're making proto device type devices at the moment to benchmark our technology against the current blue OLEDs using cell phones and virtual reality micro displays. We're looking um, at making manufacturing partnerships so we can test and develop our technology alongside um, a commercial uh, process. And we also are looking for leadership uh, to take us to the next stage of development and commercialization. So thank you for your attention. Thank you.